Hello friend, welcome back to Toyota Maintenance YouTube channel. In previous videos you saw me purchasing this 2005 Toyota Sequoia and most importantly we were able to diagnose problem with this engine. So we discovered that on the cylinder number 5 the spar plug was basically freely sitting down there because the thread in the head is completely stripped and after some research I decided to go with the trusted brand Helicoil right and this set is actually meant exactly for this repair this is not some generic repair set but it's meant for the heads in the cars of course if you look with me inside of these spar plug tubes you can see the thread to hold a spar plug it's really deep in that spar plug tube and it brings multiple challenges here you can see the reamer itself right this one fortunately has this space that hole for using the extension so that's good but if you go so far right how you keep the whole thing perfectly centered and cutting that perfect thread which you need for those inserts because of course this is wiggling a little bit right at the end it's not ever stay very steady so that's one of those of course then you have to choose which one of those inserts you will use but most likely it will be the longest one which nicely hugs that entire spar plug thread let me put it on it I put all these three inserts on right so you can see how they fit on the spar plug of course this insert should not be protruding inside of that combustion chamber but there was enough of research I think I spent enough time doing that I will go for it to keep this extension nicely centered in that spar plug tube I will actually borrow one of those broken boots right this one and I have already replacement for it it's approximately diameter of the tube so I will insert it and put it on the tool and that should help here you can see what I meant with that also as a precaution I will use a long screwdriver and put it in that spar plug tube right to see that the piston it's not in the upper position this one should be long enough right it goes in number five until it goes through the hole so I turn the engine clockwise with 22 millimeter socket right I saw the screwdriver going down now I can see I will not hit the piston now using this reamer will obviously create a lot of shavings right to catch most of it I will use the grease right put it between those threads also will lubricate that entire process right and this will help me to minimize of that foreign material falling in that cylinder and of course I will follow the same rules and regulations let's say which are in generally for cutting thread right in steel or aluminum and here you can see after the first cutting right the reamer the wider part started cutting I hope you can see it there are those aluminum shavings nicely caught in that grease so now I will wipe it off, reapply the grease and continue. Obviously this is not something 
What do you want to be rushing, right? I'm taking my time, cutting that new thread. Because you have just one shot on this, right? And as I'm progressing inside, right, the spaces are collecting that aluminum. It's being collected in the same spot. But you see the grease, it's missing on certain threads, right? It's only on the last four, let's put it this way, right? One, two, three, four, yeah. And all these are already not having grease. That, and that shows me how deep I'm getting, right? And this is fantastic. This is going really good. And look, I just pull it out, right? I did another run. The shavings are getting tiny, but observe the grease. The grease is completely wiped off that reamer's threads, right? It's just remaining on that thinner part. So that means I went all the way in. But I will not stop right here, right? I will put it again, more grease on it, right? And keep working. I'm able to move it, right? It keeps coming down really deep. It's nicely by the hand only. And when you see finally something like this, right? All the threads are wiped. So it went all the way in. I don't have more shavings. It's time to stop, right? The thread is cut, this is awesome. Now comes the next stage. I have to start cleaning the mess, right? I have a grease there, which I don't want there. And I have aluminum chunks, right? Little pieces of aluminum inside. So, well, I want to definitely get rid of it. You should see it, it's flying out, really chunks of aluminum are getting out. And I will basically go between the brake fluid, right, I'll use that, again there's a problem <laughs> how to put it here, and obviously as I said the purpose is clean it as much as possible, in the same time you don't want to leave any fluid right in that cylinder so you need to blow that brake fluid out cover it and blow it and that was a new wreck just one minute ago right i'm getting a lot of stuff out that's awesome now everything is clean i let the brake fluid like sit right five minutes so it has a time to evaporate the residue of it and now it's time for the installation so what I will do here basically what's my goal is to select correct insert right if you even take the middle one right middle size you will see that it doesn't cover the thread enough Right, this is not enough and the thread will be exposed. So I have no choice than to go with the longest one. I have a brand new spark plug ready for this install, right? Pay attention to these to these two ends. One of them is thread and one of them has that special imprint in it. So first I will install the correct insert right a thread maker on that brand new spar plug and now i'm going to insert it in and see if the thread is perfect obviously back to my spar plug installing tool right brand new plug carefully put there this is screwed all the way in and i'm going to see so now cross the fingers we will see if i did a good job or not if it will nicely grab and start going inside or not i gotta tell you the wrench is nicely going in now i will try to pull on it yep and it's staying this is fantastic so now how you correctly install right the stanley who 
sells this and makes it, I guess, doesn't give any instructions anywhere, right? How you install it. So it's up to you to figure out what to do with it. What they want, what they say, oh, you should put it this way, right, in the head. And then here is the expanding tool. And when it's inside, you hit it one or twice, once or twice, and that top part expands in the walls of that aluminum head, and therefore it will stop the rotating, and only the spark plug will be going up uh, in and out, right? I said, Stanley says, uh, that's the people who actually use that, they say that I couldn't find any info from them, unfortunately. I will do something else. Now I know this perfectly goes there, right? Fits there, excellent. I will put the copper-based entices on my plug. Obviously, you have to put it only on the thread, right? You avoid that tip. You don't ever touch it, right? So I will keep going and put a little bit more. And that's just very thin layer, right? You don't put much of it. And it's not just for this installation. Anytime I pull the plugs, and install them back or install the new ones, I always put it there because that's a guarantee that in the future, the plug will come out. Now following the same direction, this is the part which is supposed to split, right? With that tool, I will install it towards to that plug. So I have nicely that copper lubricating that, right? It will stay there because it's heat resistant. And to make sure that in the future this plug stays, that new thread, that insert, stays in the head, well, I will use the red Permatex, right? This is the thread locker, which is non-removable, right? The blue holds, but it can be removed. The red one is non-removable, so I will install that on the thread of this insert. And I took time with applying this. I don't want to go it down on the electrode. I don't want that going close to this spark plug, right? So this is already wiped by my finger. It's only inside of that thread, right? And it will be not spilling and it will be not squeezed out on either direction, right? And now it's time to install it. Here you can see it again in that wrench and by hand I will start screwing it in very carefully. I don't want to smooch it all over this place. I'll actually remove this carefully without touching anything. Get it in that thread. This is wonderful. I'm going, I'm feeling that thread, right? I can see the wrench is sinking slowly inside. That spar plug tube, so this is fantastic. I know it's going nicely in. And yeah, wish me luck with this, obviously, right? Continuing by the hand only, right? And of course, I will never torque it, especially in this case, by the hand, right? So I will use what I use for Toyotas, 18 Newton meters or 13 foot pounds of torque. Fortunately, I don't need any adapter. That spark plug wrench was long enough to come out of the valve cover. So I will keep going until the desired torque will be achieved. Still going in, right? This is all good. Nothing wrong with it. Oh yeah, now suddenly it started, right? It reached the area, it started giving resistance. I'm watching the torque range. There's a digital display. 17. It wasn't 18, it was 17.7. .7, so one more. Alright, and the result was 18.8. In this case, my friend, I remove 
everything, right? Come on, baby. Separate. Good. The spark plug is there. And now it's time for prayers. Now I will be waiting for this to dry, to harden, right? And hold that insert inside. The, so everything is installed perfectly. It should work. Meanwhile, while waiting, I can start installing everything back, right? I have replacement for this broken tip, right? Somehow uh, the parts were available. This is aftermarket. For a couple of bucks, you get the parts. So I will clean this, get rid of the oil, and install everything back. Then I will be back to you. So everything is back. The battery fully charged on the deep cycle, right? That one was almost kaput. Took like 24 hours to charge all these things. Looking, I didn't forget anything. That Fredlocker Permatex Cure Time, it's a 20 minutes for working and full cure is 24 hours. Would love to wait 24 hours, but I can't. So much in the stake for me, right? If it didn't work, I don't think it can be repaired. It will be pulling head. Oof, that's the key. I never heard this motor running correctly. I just bought it, right? The puffing, puff, puff, puff. Oh my God. I hope it will run. I hope it will run perfectly. Let's see. Obviously the idle is high and will need adjust. The motor was running only on seven cylinders last time, so that's not an issue. That will go down in a second. So relieved, my friend. So relieved. What do you hear the idle at 1600 RPM? I guarantee you it will go down very soon and you can enjoy the idle with me after approximately five minutes as i said it went down beautifully it's absolutely smooth and i think i'm ready for a test drive one thing done but there is way more so make sure you are subscribed i will have a lot about sequoia coming your way soon thanks for watching and have a good one